So for the last few weeks, I've been working on this contraption, which is intended to be a low-cost alternative to something that I used when I was teaching undergraduate courses. And the commercially available option works fairly well, but it's, in my opinion, horrendously overpriced. And it also is sometimes limited in how you can expand its functionality. And my friend is actually teaching high school physics in Japan, so she originally contacted me asking if there would be a way to make a lower cost alternative to the commercial versions of these. And I decided to look into it and I found there was a research group in Spain that had published a paper on doing a version of this, but they did that way back in 2016 when the microcontrollers that were available were a little bit different. And they also ended up limiting their use case to people who already had those uh, sets and they just wanted to buy more units to work with the existing ones. So this is a little bit different in several ways. One is that this can work completely on its own. You don't need to buy any part of the expensive ecosystem to use this. And the other way it's different is that uh, it has one of these, which this is the ESP32 uh, microcontroller, which is a sort of little Internet of Things chipset that has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into it. And so what there is is, you see, this little board right here is an accelerometer. So able to take in acceleration readings, because this is intended for undergraduate physics education. And that means that it's, you know, basically what happens is it rolls along and it measures how much it's accelerating and the students then combine that with uh, another sensor that I don't have mounted on here right now which is an ultrasonic sensor and they use that to compare you know does the position of the cart measured using the ultrasonic sensor or also it'll I'm, I'm measuring it using this uh, photodiode here does that match the acceler you know, does that match the double integral of the acceleration they measure using the accelerometer? Uh, as well as, uh, they are called collision cards because you can take two of these and you can collide them together and they'll bounce off of each other and you can measure the velocities before and after and you know the relative masses and then you can determine that m momentum and energy are conserved before and after a collision. Or you can determine that momentum is conserved before and after a collision and you can see the extent to which energy is conserved. So, yeah, this thing, I, it's still a work in progress, but uh, let me show you a couple of things it can do real quick. So there's this Python script that controls everything using UDP, and we have to zero it real quick so the accelerometers and gyros know what zero is. And once that's complete, go ahead and move it back and forth a little. Move it up and down, rotate it, and take a look at the graph. So this plot is generated automatically when the Python script receives the data over UDP from the microcontroller that's connected to the accelerometer on the actual card. And those top three graphs represent the acceleration, and the bottom three represent the angle, which is inferred by integrating up the gyroscope's readings, right, because the gyroscopes tell you rotation rate, multiply rotation rate by time, you get angle. And so just looking at those plots, you can kind of see the movements that I was doing there, right? The uh, z-axis accelerometer just reads a constant 9.8 because it's just feeling the force of gravity. The x-axis basically reads nothing except some little noise bumps when I'm moving it back and forth. And the y-axis, you can see that it jumps up for a while and down for a while as I'm accelerating it forwards and backwards. Uh, and the angle, you can see where I lifted the uh, x-axis, rotated it, and set it back down. Uh, and the other two rotate to angles other than the start because they just kind of move around. Although it's like two degrees in z because the cart actually steers a little bit and less than one degree in y because, well, the wheels need a little bit of work, my 3D printer needs some tuning. <laughs> Which, another little experiment to do is to have it roll down a ramp like this, which this one is set to 25 degrees, and with that little, uh, well it's actually a yardstick, not a meter stick on the back, uh, so I have a wireless keyboard there to 
start the Python script. Uh, this is a work in progress, after all. And that towel is there to break its fall at the bottom. Oh. All right, let's look at the graph. Okay, so the graphs look like this, formatted precisely the same way before. So this is acceleration x, acceleration y, acceleration z, and likewise for the angles. So these are all rel the angles are all relative to the start position, right? So they all start at zero. So ch a change of 25 degrees actually corresponds to uh, going to uh, an angle of zero, uh, which uh, it seems like I must not be doing this quite right because it's just getting more like you know, 14, 15 degrees. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, more things to improve. Uh, but take a look at a couple things here, right? One is you'll notice that the z-axis acceleration, uh, it has this noisy bumps while it's sort of going down that rickety little track. Uh, but it basically just stays at uh, the value it stays at, which is not quite 9.8, it's more like 9, uh, and that is actually correct if you just, you know, solve the problem of a, you know, cart with wheels going down an inclined plane, uh, or something fried sliding down a frictionless inclined plane, that's actually correct, the normal force doesn't change. Uh, and then this one is also broadly correct, right, the uh, sort of horizontal component uh, of the acceleration is, you know, equal to, you know, 9.8 times the sine of 25, uh, which gives, uh, a, you know, like 4.9, which is about what you get here. Yeah. So not too shabby. And then when it's, you know, sort of in free fall, rolling down the track, it's very noisy, but it basically drops to zero. Uh, and then it's slightly above, but near zero at the bottom, uh, because the cart sort of changes uh, angle uh, about the uh, uh, x-axis here. Uh, so it goes from, you know, pointing 25 degrees down to level, so that now uh, normal force is all, and you can see that this actually on the other side, and over here, it's like, uh, you know, it, it is about 9, and on the other side, it, it's more like 9.8, yeah. So there it's about 9, and over here it's about 9.8. And then here it's about 4 beforehand, and then it goes to, you know, a little over 1, because uh, it you know, I need the towel at the bottom so that it, uh, it probably wouldn't break, but I, you know, yeah, don't want to break it right away. And, uh, you know, then likewise, the, this is just a four degree bump in the Y angle, which just corresponds to the bumpiness of the track. Uh, you know, it's not really, because that would be sort of the cart rolling uh, on its, uh, longitudinal axis as it goes down. Um, and then, the again the z changes also by uh, like six degrees but that's you know again just the cart uh you know goes off the end of the track and then it's no longer constrained to pointing in the direction it started and it just changes by some random angle when it hits the towel at the bottom uh so it looks like uh, things are more or less working so yeah i need to now add the ultrasonic sensor as well as make use of that photodiode to uh, look at the markings on uh something like that uh well, I, I want to use an actual meter stick markings, uh, and I'll also use just black and white, uh, even centimeter markings instead of just uh, hash marks every, like, well, inch the way I am on that stupid yardstick. Um, but yeah, so far this is uh, looking pretty all right. So I'm going to keep working on this stupid little thing for a while, but it's a potentially useful little educational tool, and it's designed to all be free and open source, so... I, you know, will make the STL files for the mechanical components, uh, as well as the software that runs on the microcontroller and the software that runs uh, on the server side or on the, you know, on the computer side, um, either through a web server or just directly on the computers that the students are using available. So yeah, this is a little free and open source collision cart, uh, motivated by my friend teaching uh, physics in Japan and uh, inspired by uh, open source uh, demonstration by a team from Spain. Uh, I'll link to their paper as well as their GitHub project uh, in the description. So uh, yeah, peace.